on you will go, though the weather be foul. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. Put in the work, the hours, the sweat. On you will go, though the hat can crack, howl. See, dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Everybody, Big Anklevich here. I bet you thought I was dead. Turns out I'm not. But sometimes I think I should be. Uh, that's a little over dramatic, isn't it? <clears throat> so, I'm here with another show of the Ankle Cast. We've been on hiatus for a couple of months because. Well, I didn't want to do this show where I admit that I suck. Um, We've been talking about doing a novel over the summer, me and Rish. And uh, yeah, we were supposed to start writing in July. And I think that was probably... I think that was probably the last uh, ankle cast that I did. No, I think it was before that. I think it was June. When July came, I was supposed to start writing, and I wasn't ready to start writing because I hadn't been very diligent in June. And Rish was that way, too, because he, (laughs) unlike me, had been writing furiously on something else. Um, and, uh, he wasn't done with it quite in time to get his planning stuff done, and so he, but the thing was, what he wrote was so long that it could be considered not more than 50,000 words, or right around 50,000 anyways, I don't remember exactly what it was. That's what Rich was doing. He was writing a novel, so he couldn't get to his novel because he was busy writing a novel. Me, I was not. I was finding uh, other things to do. I was watching Daredevil and Game of Thrones and in general, just looking for anything else to do but what I had agreed to do, that I, what I had proposed I would do, professed I would do. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't want to do this show because I was embarrassed about how much of a, a lame-o I was. And I think that shows my 80s roots, but yeah, I was a lame-o. Um, I, I, don't, I wish I could figure out what the deal is, why it is that I avoid writing. I suppose it's work. I suppose it takes thought. You have to sit and concentrate on something, and it's it's not something I'm necessarily good at, concentrating and putting in the effort. I've done that here and there with things. I mean, shoot, I ran... 500 miles in one year, one time, and that took a lot of effort and a lot of uh, dedication, but uh, so far writing hasn't been one of those things that I've been dedicated to for very long. I've never been able to manage for more than a month or two tops, and Especially the planning thing. I remember saying, oh yeah, I'll, I'll get to put a whole month into it. That's great. That'll give me lots of time and I'll, and, uh, I'll feel free to actually do it and to not worry about, hey, I should be writing. But the thing is, I should be planning and I wasn't doing that. I was finding other things to do. I was uh, busy being a consumer rather than being a producer. I was busy, uh, I mean, some of the things that I found to do were legit. I was taking care of my family and stuff like that, but 
most of it wasn't, I have to admit. And I have to admit that I'm ashamed that I didn't follow through with what I said I was going to. Um, there was, there's a listener to our show. Her name was Ginger. And I kind of want to dedicate this episode to her. If that means anything. I don't know if that means anything. I don't know if she was the only person that she knew who listened to our show or if she has lots of friends that also listen. Nobody listens to my show, so maybe it doesn't mean anything. Uh, And by nobody, I mean nobody other than you who is listening right now. Uh, But the other day I was on Facebook and somebody had uh, commented on her profile picture and it was a picture of her just her face and her head and she had purple hair and somebody's comment was R.I.P. Ginger and I thought okay maybe this is just a joke about that maybe she had red hair before and now it's purple and so R.I.P. to the ginger um but uh turns out that wasn't the case and the more I looked the more things kept popping up and I found that ginger who was one of our listeners and she was even there was a time where I put out a call for people to be first readers of my stuff that I write and she was one of the people that volunteered for that and I had a, a fair amount of interaction with her um, and yeah the more I saw the more I found out that this was true it wasn't just a joke about her hair it was what had happened Ginger had died and uh I looked into it and found that she died in a car accident um, the day before. And I don't know Ginger well. I haven't had a lot of dealings with her to really know what she's like. She's obviously a cool person because she likes the Dune Steve. So there's that. But I don't know why, but it really kind of upset me, really kind of disturbed me. I'm pretty sure that Ginger is younger than either Rish or I. And I've often worried about and thought a lot about the the vagaries of life, the 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 randomness of things, the way you can't you can't really rely on tomorrow. Um, I think that probably comes from working in news. We do uh, a story, a news story, pretty much every day about somebody who's died in a car accident. They'll put little things up. The Department of Transportation here, you know, they have this goal, which of course is a not going to happen kind of a goal, but. You know, it's what they say they want to achieve, and that is zero fatalities uh, on the roads. And they have these little billboards that they put up little messages telling you to buckle your seatbelt or to pay attention to uh, what your, you know, the road in front of you instead of your cell phone, etc., to try and warn people, try to get them to make good choices while they're on the road so that they don't wind up uh, in an accident. And then another thing that they do on these billboards is their electronic little kind of message boards, and sometimes they'll say, 
out of the last seven days, there have been three days with no fatalities or whatever. And the days between Memorial Day and Labor Day apparently are the most deadly days of the year. Uh, I guess you would think it would be the opposite in like winter with snow and ice and stuff all over the road would be more likely to be the deadly times. And apparently there's more accidents at those times, but they're less deadly accidents because people are going already slower because of the conditions. But in the summer, the conditions are beautiful. There's no uh, reason for anybody to slow down. And so they drive faster than they need to, faster than they should. And when an accident happens, they're going to 80. And an accident at 80 is going to be much more deadly than an accident at 40. Um, and yeah, it, life is like that. I mean, the, the billboard yesterday said one out of the last seven days, there have been no fatalities on the roads. One out of seven and that is apparently I mean I've never seen it that low before the, I, I would think they would just pick a different message on a day like that because you know it seems like when they're putting up how many days usually it's like three out of seven or four out of seven I've never seen it very good and has never been five out of seven uh, But yeah, one out of seven is all it was. That's how many people, and I don't even know, you know, some of those days I know that there was more than one uh, fatality on the roads in one day. Um, how many people that just, their lives were snuffed out just because they weren't paying attention or you know uh, something weird happened um, from what I saw in the article the person who was driving the car that Ginger was in uh, drifted off the road to one side realized they were drifting off the road to the side tried to get themselves back in in place, overcorrected, and wound up going off the road on the other side, hitting off a, I want to say they hit off a pole before also, before finally resting against a, another pole or a tree or something like that, I can't remember. But just, life is short, you know, it's, it's something I'm sure I've talked about before. If not here, then on the main show or on that gets my goat or somewhere. It's just, it's short. It's, there's no knowing when your time is up. And Ginger, this person that was one of our listeners her time is up. I don't know what plans she may have had for her life that were never fulfilled, what uh, dreams that she wanted to achieve. Um, I don't know, it's interesting. I remember on Firefly they talked about, uh, I, I want to say it's the episode where uh, the guy that used to be their friend he mails himself to them dead in a box and uh, they're all a little disturbed by that there's the scene where Jane and Shepard Book are talking about how they deal with death and uh You know, they're, they're talking about just how everybody deals with it in, in a different way. Some people are, you know, moved to tears. Some people uh, get angry. Some people, uh, in that case, I think Jane just 
he says it makes him want to go out and get frisky with somebody and he's like oh it's not because I'm you know I'm not into you know necrophilia or anything like that I'm, it's just Shepard Book's like yeah no I understand you want to prove that you're still alive basically get out there and show them that you're, you're still ticking you're not giving up or whatever and I don't know if my reaction to this news is weird or not but I, I would assume it's kind of uh, relatively normal I don't know uh, but basically when I see that it just makes me think that it, the plans and the dreams that I have for my life, I better get in gear in achieving them. Obviously, they're not going to do it, do themselves, if you know what I'm saying. Like, my, I say that to my kids a lot, because, like, just the other day, my daughter came down, she's like, Dad, you know where my iPod is? They can't find my iPod. And I'm just, I said, well you got to keep looking. I, I haven't seen it. I'm sorry. But keep looking. It's not going to find you. You have to find it. So don't just sit there and whine about how you can't find it. Keep looking. Look in the places that you haven't looked yet. Relook in the places that you have looked because maybe you missed it. Keep looking. You will find it, but it will not find you. And that's same deal with with, for example, writing a novel. It's something that I want to achieve, and it will not write itself. I can't just sit here on this show and whine about how I didn't do it over the summer, and how ashamed I am that I led everybody to believe that I was going to be all going for it, and instead I just avoided it, like I always do. Led everybody to believe that I was going to go for it, and instead I did my same old shtick. Um, I can't just whine about that, because it's not going to write itself. I have to get it written. I have to work on it and make sure that it gets written, because that's the only way it's going to happen. Another goal in my life, one of those bucket list kind of things that I've been saying that I'm going to do for a few years. I've actually, if I go back and look, I made a list of a bunch of things once when I was like 20 of things I wanted to do before I die. And a lot of them, I look at them now and I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like skydiving was on the list. I don't want to do that. I don't care. Uh, maybe I'll do it, but it's not a goal anymore. But run a marathon was on that list all the way back then. And that still feels like something that I want to do. Something that, And I think the reason it still matters to me is it's an achievement. It's not just, hey, I went out, I paid somebody a hundred bucks, and I jumped out of a plane. Uh so that I could crap my pants uh, as we fall out of the sky. Maybe that'd be fun, it'd be awesome, but it wouldn't be an achievement. It would just be like, hey, I went to the water slide and I went down the scary water slide, yay. Uh, you know, maybe it's facing a fear or something, but it's not, I put in a lot of effort, I worked hard, and I did this, but running a marathon is definitely an achievement. It's not something you can just go out and do that day. You can't just pay somebody a hundred bucks and, hey, you know, strap yourself on <laughs> tandem style and have them run the marathon for you as you just have like, I don't know, roller skates or something on your feet and they drag you along uh, the way you do with skydiving. Um, so, I still really want to do a marathon. 
Um, I've been saying I'm gonna do it. There's a marathon coming up here in town in April. And that's my goal, is to run it in April. Uh, I think I probably need to go and see a podiatrist before uh, too much more time goes by, though. So I got some kind of issue going on with my foot that causes my whole body uh, pain all the way up to my lower back and my hip and my knee and etc. It's just all food bar. I need to find out what's going on with that. And I've been able to mitigate that at, at times just by doing yoga and stretching and that kind of stuff. But I'm lazy with that, just like I'm lazy with everything. And so I haven't been doing that And so recently. Oh my gosh. I'm just so unbelievably uncomfortable all the time. Um, so I, I, at the very least, I need to start getting back into the yoga and the stretching to to make it possible. Um, but yeah, to be able to do this marathon in April, it's going to require a lot of work, and it's also going to require a lot of attention put on my diet. I can't just eat whatever the hell I want. And, uh, you know, that's what I've been doing, and yeah, I'm gonna kill myself if I try and run 26 miles weighing what I do now. I'm just gonna destroy every joint in my body. So that's another thing that I'm gonna have to really work on if I want to run a marathon. I was wondering, I don't know if this would be, how helpful this will be, but planning out, you know, putting it on to a schedule, all the different things. Like, for example, on my phone, I have a just a bunch of alarms that are set on my phone. They're to go with my, my diet, you know, to try and, because, you know, they say your metabolism will be raised if you eat more often, less food more often, basically, five meals a day instead of three, and you just have smaller meals. And uh, so, I've got uh, all these alarms set to remind me when it's time to eat so that I don't miss some of those meals. Because I've found that if I'm getting busy and I'm not paying attention, I will miss those. So I set those alarms for that reason. And I'm wondering if I could set... I, I even set an extra alarm that just goes off once a week to remind us that it's trash day. So we actually put our dang trash cans out and don't have the trash piling up on us because we forgot to. I'm wondering if I could do a similar thing with the other stuff that I need to do. For example, writing. I could schedule out, hey, I'm going to write at this time each day and I'll set a little alarm that rings that reminds me that's writing time uh, so that while I'm sitting there thinking hmm I should watch more Game of Thrones then that alarm will go off and I'll be like oh crap no I should I should be writing uh, I think I'm gonna try and work that out work out a little schedule um, for for the whole week and uh, see if that will help um, but yeah I don't know I mean I think my idea for a novel and Rish has said it a few times to me that it's a really good idea uh, I don't know how much it, it's just that he likes superhero type ideas is why he thinks it's such a good idea it's a superhero one um but I like the idea. I really think it'll be fun. I think it can be a, a series, at least a trilogy of books, but possibly a longer series even than that, where it's, uh, you know, four or five books before it's over. Um, I've got kind of plans for it. 
uh, to be such. And I was, I was even, I even worked on it a little bit. I talked some of it through as I was driving home uh, from work the other day. And uh, I worked out a lot of stuff that's actually going to be far beyond the scope of the first book, which I suppose is good. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a good idea. I think it'll I think it'll make a good book. I think it even has some good twists to it, some really interesting stuff to it that. Uh, I think we'll make it fun. I was actually planning to uh, something I thought of doing was was doing the planning of the book, doing the outline of the book as podcasts. So I have this outlining uh, how to outline uh, book and workbook that I got from this author. Oh, I can't think of her name off the top of my head right now, unfortunately. But uh, I'll surely tell you what it is when I get to the podcast itself. But uh, this author did this, uh, this outlining book, and I went through it and kind of took notes and gleaned what I needed to from the first chapter, and then I was going to go through and fill in that stuff and then do a podcast about it. I even sent an email to the author to check and see if that would be cool, do a podcast based on her novel where I talk about how to or use her how to outline to outline my novel. Now, I worry a little bit about it because if I do all that on a podcast, then everyone will know the story and possibly will not need, feel the need to ever read the story when the story actually comes out. Um, or maybe that'll make them want to read them all the more. I don't know. Back in the day, uh, when Marvel was doing their Civil War uh, event in Marvel Comics, Rish was really into comics at that time, and he would read the, the comics, and then he would tell me about what happened in the comics. And him telling me about what happened uh, would get me interested enough that I would then go out and buy the comics so that I could read them myself and find that Rish was terrible at remembering what exactly happened, or I don't know, maybe just didn't understand, whatever. But I'd read it and be like, what the hell? Rish said this other thing happened. This is not what happened. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, maybe that'll make you want to buy it all the more that you listen to the uh, outlining process. I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to do it, though. Uh, if nothing else, maybe someday in the future people will read it. And then they'll be like, oh, there's podcasts about the outlining of it. I should go back and listen to those because that would be neat to hear uh, how somebody outlined a book that I've read. So I think I'm going to go for it. I'll podcast these uh, the outlining sessions or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm going to try and push myself on it so that the podcasts will be more frequent. It will come out more often than once a month, like my regular ankle casts do. Uh, because I'm supposed to do the whole outline in a month. Now, obviously, that was three months ago that I was supposed to do that. And those days have passed. But I still, uh, I, w I would like to get on it and actually do it. So I'm going to try and do it all in a month, and we'll see how fast and how hard I can go on this. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I think, what the dill is going to be. Uh, looks like my battery's about to die on the recorder, so hopefully uh, I'll be able to finish before it does. Um... But anyways, yeah, Rish and I got together. Uh, we've been having a hard time getting together because we used to get together on Mondays every week, but he's been scheduled to work every Monday recently. So not too long ago, uh, 
we got together on a weekend because he got a special weekend off for working hard or, you know, uh, for sacrificing for the man or whatever it was that he did that got him this weekend off. And so uh, on this weekend off, he decided we would finally get around to, and he had this idea probably three years ago that he and I would go out to the cabin where his family, uh, that his family owns and uh, have kind of like a writer's retreat there. Um, we didn't do a whole lot of writing. Uh, it was a little frustrating. I, I, I totally blew it because my outline that I had, uh, I had it on Google Docs and you can, you know, use Google Docs when you're offline but obviously you have to have it downloaded to the device that you're gonna use it on. And for some reason I thought I had it. I didn't worry about making sure and loading it up while I was still within, you know, Wi-Fi or at least cell phone service uh, area. And so once we got up to the cabin and there was no service, yeah, I, I didn't have it. And so I couldn't, uh, couldn't work on it, but we did do a whole lot of podcast. Uh, we started up a marathon that we decided we were going to do. Before the marathon, we did a uh, podcast talking about, I think we're going to call the episode the abject failure episode. Basically, we talked about uh, failing to write the novel over the summer, because both of us have. Rish is working on it, and he started writing it. And I'm excited because he's writing an idea that he has had for years. I mean, he told me about this one a while ago, but he wouldn't he wouldn't write it because he thought, oh, this is a this screenplay and I can't write it as a novel. Um, but yeah, now he's I guess decided to finally do it as a novel, and uh, he's working on it. He's not anywhere close to done, and. Uh, Neither am I, and we talked about that, and I figured I probably ought to get this episode out before that that gets my GOAT episode airs, so that I could, I don't know, explain myself, but, um, but yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna go for it, I'm not gonna give up, I don't want to get in that car accident someday. And I assume that that's coming for me, you know? I drive 45 minutes to work and 45 minutes home from work every day. That's a lot of time on the road. Sooner or later, that accident is gonna catch up to me. It's like the, I guess we're going back to Firefly, which is weird, but it's like that, that quote from Firefly where, you know, out, there's a bullet with your name on it, uh, with your name on it out there, and the trick is dying of old age before it finds you. There's a car accident with my name on it out there. A big, bad, devastating car accident. A rollover kind of car accident. I, I, I almost guarantee it. Uh, unless, you know, I don't know, unless I become a writer and I can work from home and I don't have to make this commute anymore, which is, you know, kind of a goal of mine, but uh, also perhaps a pie-in-the-sky dream, like the zero fatalities dream of the uh, Department of Transportation here. Uh I just figure that car accident, it's waiting for me. And if I want to achieve what I want to achieve, I need to get on it. My mountain's waiting. I need to get on my way. And it's uh, what I got to do. I got to got to really do it. You know, the, the that thing that people talk about, you know, the deathbed regrets. Nobody ever wishes, oh, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. 
or oh I wish I I don't watch more episodes of Game of Thrones uh, not that I watch those constantly or anything but I do waste my time I wish I'd spent more time on Facebook I wish I'd tweeted more tweets you know nobody's gonna say that um and Facebook may well be my big time waster because I'll look at crap on Facebook all the time and none of it's worthwhile most of it's just stupid um not the stuff that people say I'm not saying you know what you're posting on Facebook about your life or whatever is stupid but I'm talking about the articles and things like that that people will link to and I'll go and spend 30 minutes or whatever reading this entire big long article about some stupid BS unnecessary and uh, maybe that's something I'll do maybe I'll take a break from Facebook for a while um but yeah, I, I am I am going to definitely put some more effort into this stuff and uh, get some things done. And uh, hopefully soon you will be hearing from me about a book that I've finished. And uh, that would be cool. Anyways, uh... I think I'm going to say that I've said my piece today. I've been talking for 35 minutes, so that's plenty. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all I've got to say is, you know, A, we're going to, you know, even though I didn't know Ginger well, We'll miss you, Ginger. I'm sorry that things turned out the way they did. And I hope those that are closest to you can get some comfort in this time. And be... Life is short, everybody. Get out there and make it count. It's short, and your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to a great place. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. Do it! You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. Don't let your dreams be dreams. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are a million no's, but all you need is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're gonna do today. Just do it! And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. That's all it takes to be successful is an attitude. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful. Nothing is impossible! Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle! Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye!